Ladies and most gentlemen, today we are going to check out something which I've been waiting for for such a long time and it is finally here and I feel like I say that every single video because the beta is wrapping up and it's getting good guys, it's getting good. So, from the title of the video I'm sure you can guess what this is, well you know what this is and we're basically, I'm live recording this as you can tell, I'm just going to literally just fly around, we're going to take a look at what is new in this zone, there is a ton to look at so unfortunately this video might be a bit longer than the usual but trust me, it'll be worth it, it is so cool. Uh, I'm going to add in some uh, parts of older Arathi when necessary just to kind of compare the differences and yeah, it's honestly got me so hyped, got me so hyped for, for Warfront. So guys, uh, using the Spectral Griffin because it's slightly less intrusive than most mounts because we can see straight through it and uh, basically the first thing you'll notice is a new skybox. Now this skybox actually extends all the way out into wetlands and uh, yeah it looks great and I did look on the other one and yeah it just honestly I have a feeling it may have stemmed from um, a reddit post that said about adding the new skyboxes to old zones and honestly even in wetlands it looks great so I really hope they extend these skyboxes to uh, more zones because it just looks absolutely awesome. So, this is the map. There is a world quest. We'll get to that shortly. And this is the updated map. It's fairly similar to the old one, but it has a few updates to uh, this area over here where the horde base is in warfronts. And basically, the whole warfront goes on around this zone here. And this zone here is actually neglected by the, the warfront map, but. There is some updates and it looks amazing. So guys, what we're going to do first is take a right. We are going to go look at this little encampment over here, which is full of ogres. To my knowledge, I don't think there's many updates to this. There is there is minor updates to pretty much every part of the zone, just like more high-res models and stuff. So you can see like the, the, uh, the new ogre models there. And yeah, just like the rocks and things like that just look updated. This zone is actually completely covered in rare spawns. Now the rare spawns actually do have a chance to drop a lot of mounts. I don't know if it's 100%. Uh, I guess we'll find out in due time. But there is, you know, five mounts that have a potential of dropping from a lot of these rares in the zone. And you'll see on the minimap there is just rares absolutely everywhere. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. It really is. So as I said, this, this little part, not too many updates, just like a few high res things. So let's head down to the Go Chic Farm and take a look at this. So you can see instantly, I'm not going to get too low because uh, I will get killed, but you can see instantly these buildings here are brand new and they look absolutely amazing. Honestly, the, we'll, we'll take a closer look because there are some others over here as well, but they are, they just look so great, honestly. And as well, you can see the new tree design as well. The, the whole zone has just had this amazing revamp. And just looking at it just makes me want them to go through the whole world and just give it this amazing coat of paint that just looks great. Uh, this guy over here, Doom Rider uh, Helgrim, actually drops that mount that he's riding over there. The uh, the Highland Mustang, I think it is, but we're uh, not going to touch him for now. He only has 234k health, which isn't a lot in the grand scheme of things. But I don't think I can take him by myself because of all the, uh, the ads, unfortunately. So, okay, there's someone attacking down there. So, moving on. So this is the Witherbark Village, which is the troll area, and this has had a huge update as well, which was very unexpected. Uh, using a lot of the assets from Zandalar, actually, but recolored into like a green color. Uh, they've definitely, yeah, I mean, comparing it to the old zone of, uh, of the troll village, it is just a massive improvement, honestly. And actually, just to note, these NPCs are actually 120. So this isn't a level 60 zone anymore, uh, up to level 60 zone anymore. These are 120. And yeah, as you can see, like the new... New huts for them, the the trolls look exactly the same as they were previously, but yeah, I mean, you've got new huts, you've got... It just looks great, it really does, and I've they've gone beyond what I was expecting of the zone. I really thought it was just going to update the zones, that the parts that were relevant, but they've really gone ab above and beyond with this, and um, it looks great, it really does. And there's another rare down there. So moving on over to Hammerfall, as we uh, fly over this little troll zone here, which again, as I said, just looks absolutely incredible. And uh, all these raptors and stuff are all 120 now as well, which is uh, really nice to see. There is some raptor mounts that do drop. There, uh, there are some rare raptors as well. But Hammerfall has had a massive upgrade. So let's take a look at this. So instantly, it just looks 10 times better. Looking at the old one, I mean, it is just a night and day difference. It really is. You still have the portal to Arathi Basin in there as well. But um, yeah, overall, the design of the zone is incredible. There is... So... 
I level, I logged on to my Horde character to take a look at the zone and see what the differences were. It actually had the, because he's a level 116, he actually still had the older Rathi on uh, that character. So I assume once you hit 120 and Warfronts are activated and stuff like that, the zone does update. So I, I don't think older rathi has gone forever, but I think it is gone for uh, high level players. But yeah, um, all the guards are 120 now. I will get a little bit closer to see if we can get a better look at what's inside. But yeah, the new huts and stuff, it just honestly incredible. I just want them to update everything and there's a guy in here as well. So yeah, moving on. So this is uh, uh, to the left of uh, Hammerfall. We have the Circle of East Bindings where we have a Cresting Goliath, who is another rare with a lot of health. I don't, I, as I, said, I don't know what these guys drop. I probably will come back and uh, maybe do it on stream and kill these guys and see what they actually drop. But as I said, there is some that do drop mounts, which is pretty damn cool. And uh, I would love to see what the drop rate is on those. Uh, coming over to this part here, we have the Echo of uh, My Rizel. Yeah, covered in um, Burning Guardians and some Cresting Guardians. Very cool model. I think that's actually, it must have been from like Tumas Argaris or something like that. It's definitely a cool looking color for that uh, that particular model. So, oh, okay, being attacked. Um, so you have this uh, farmstead here, which I believe is unchanged, but obviously the new buildings are in there, like the new, uh, the new barn model, which absolutely looks so, so cool. You've still got the syndicates here as well. They haven't uh, gone anywhere, but they are now 120. So I don't want to mess with those too much, but look inside that barn. I'll try to get inside one of the barns over there. Um, over that area because there is some uh, some Alliance ones. So this zone is currently actually owned by the Alliance, so this is what it's going to look like for the Alliance. Uh, when the Horde own the zone, it will change. Uh, well, the zone will be exactly the same, but the spawns will be slightly different, um, mainly around here where the Horde base is, but we'll get to that when we get over there. Uh, Refuge Point has uh, actually had some updates as well, along with uh, Hammerfall, and it's just a minor update again, but just the little things just make it so much better, like the new huts that you can see here just look great. You've still got all the Horde similar NPCs that were there before. Another Azerite powered war machine. There's a world quest. And uh, yeah, you still got the portal for Rathi Basin still. And uh, yeah, just all the regular stuff you'd see. And they've got an updated horse, which looks great. Wonderful. So moving on, I was, as I said, I was going to tell you about that uh, world quest. So this world quest is actually for a boss called Doom's Howl. Now this is the Alliance boss when the Alliance are on the war front. But when the Horde own it, there is a, a uh, Alliance equivalent. And this guy does drop some epics. He is on this list here. And yeah, he drops some pretty good epics, to be honest. It's actually a recolor of the Warfront gear as well. So the shoulders and chest for that one, which are pretty cool. And uh, yeah, he's got tactics and stuff. I don't think we're going to be able to take him out. But we, you know, we could find a group in theory. But I don't think there's anyone going to be doing it at this time in the morning. So... And you've got little ads running around as well. Those guys actually have the uh, the shield from Black Temple, which is kind of cool. And uh, it looks great. It really does. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm very excited for Old World uh, World Quests. That's going to be really awesome. So you've got this uh, mine down here. If you have seen anyone do the Warfronts or know anything about it, there is a mine and a lumber mill. This is the mine for the Horde. And yeah, so at the start of the Warfront, you'll want to take this as soon as possible. Uh, I would go in there. There's nothing really special in there. There's just some uh, some NPCs and stuff. There is a rare down there for the Alliance, and he's called Overseer Crix. And I believe he drops a mount. Uh, he drops Little Donkey. There it is. He drops Little Donkey. But again, I don't know what the percentage of the drop rate is. So this is the Horde base here, and it is called... I'm going to try and pronounce this. It's going to be an absolute... Brutal Annihilation, it's called uh, Ark Gorok, and it is currently destroyed, and you have the ghosts that are all around, so this is, as I said, when the Alliance wins, so they would have destroyed the Horde town, and it is all just in ruins right now, and yeah, I mean, this is really cool, it's got, like, all the buildings that the Horde would have built, they're just destroyed, and there is another rare here, of course, Horrific Apparition. And uh, yeah, it is so cool. I love the new high res. I mean, this is very similar to the models they kind of used in uh, Walls of Draenor. In fact, I'm sure you guys are screaming in the comments right now saying all of this is reused assets from Walls of Draenor. But even if it is, I think it still looks absolutely fantastic. And uh, yeah, but as I said, when the Horde own this, this will be all built up and this will be your little hub for you to hang out in. Uh, but at the moment for the Alliance, we have Stromgard. So we'll get to there towards the end of the video because that is probably the best part of it, honestly. Uh, you've got these little zones here, which um, you take during the Warfronts. 
like the uh, the Norfolk Crossing, you've got High Perch, you've got Newstead. They're all just different bases that you take during a warfront. And uh, I'm sure once the game launches, you'll understand a bit more. If you've seen streams, you kind of understand it. It's it's pretty hard to explain just randomly flying around. So TLDR, there are small bases that you take during the warfront. And um, once you take them, if you're Horde, they turn into Horde bases. If you're Alliance, they turn into Alliance bases. It's uh, fairly, fairly simplistic. So this is that barn I was telling you about. The lighting in this barn is incredible. I love the small details in here. And it just looks Honestly, it just looks so fantastic, and this is a light owned um, little farm, and yeah, just the barns look great, the buildings look fantastic, like the lighting, the use of lighting and shading, it just makes it look so good. Honestly, it makes it look like a new game, and I love the art style they've gone in Battle for Azeroth, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing more things like this, because it is just, it's just so appealing to look at, it really is, compared to like the old models that basically just look like... Warcraft 3 models in my opinion, but yeah, so you got some NPCs around here. This guy is actually wearing the Warfront um, Warrior uh, the Warfront plate armor. He's wearing the um, Yeah, the helm and the uh, shoulders and it looks great. Oh, yeah, and uh, he's not riding one of the new horses though So the horse kind of looks a bit out of place with his shiny new armor and shield that shield is absolutely amazing as well uh, So we are getting close guys. We're getting close to strong guard uh, over here. We have a lumber mill uh, not too much to say about it really, just a standard lumber mill. Um, got some new assets there as well, which I believe are new. Again, could be reused from WAD, but looks great nonetheless. So, time for the main event, ladies and gentlemen. We are going inside Stromgard Keep. So these are... Oh, there's some people flying around as well. We have... Um, these two turrets here are very, very important to the Warfront. As a Horde, you want to destroy them. As the Alliance, you want to defend them. And uh, yeah, this is the new entrance to Stromgard. So comparing that to the old one, honestly, it's a night and day difference. And I'm so happy they updated it because Stromgard is such a cool zone uh, in general and just in lore and everything. And I'm just so happy that they've actually gone through, put the effort in and made it look fantastic again. So let's enter Stromgard Keep, ladies and gentlemen. So we have the buildings. The buildings are up, and they weren't actually up when I spawned in here for the first time, so this is going to be relatively new to me. So, we have the engineering kind of building here, building siege engines. Uh, we have the... Uh, that is definitely a reused asset from what I have seen that definitely before, but... The the, the cool thing about this zone, um, which I find, is a lot of the buildings do look like they are st taken straight from Warcraft 3, and given the 2018 upgraded look. And they just work so great in this little zone. Like, during the Warfronts, you, when you start, there won't be any buildings, and you progressively build them up. I believe these are the level 3 iterations of them. There is three levels, and these are the final forms. And yeah, these are... I believe these buildings are used in uh, in Walls of Draenor. I'm fairly sure I remember them in my garrison. And you have the Town Hall here, which again, as I said, just looks straight out of Warcraft 3. And it's... yeah, they've really done a really good job on it. This has given me garrison flashbacks of doing my uh, my table, so I'm going to get the hell out of there. So this is the main event for me, honestly. The Altar of Storms, the Big Daddy. I've not seen this model since... Um, I've not seen this model in-game. I believe it's brand new, and if you play Warcraft 3, this is just the be-all and end-all of, uh, of models in World of Warcraft, because I think it looks absolutely fantastic and have done an amazing job with it. There's actually a portal to Boralus from here as well, which is cool, and there's a portal mm -hmm. trainer. Uh, just to add, some of the NPCs around this zone are actually trainers. So if we head over to this zone over here, there are some small buildings and some trainers. There is real, legit engineering trainers, alchemy trainers, and everything like that. So it is still like a, a sort of city hub, and it's a rested area as well. So in theory, if you want somewhere to hang out during, you know, the downtime, you can just hang out in Stromgard Keep, which is something you never thought you'd do. But uh, yeah, you can now hang out. If we own Stromgard Keep, you can now hang out in there as an alliance. And uh, this is one of the new inns as well, which is... Uh, it just looks great, honestly. I'm, I'm very, very impressed with uh, the art team on this one. They've done an absolutely incredible job. So guys, that is pretty much it for Raffi Highlands. I'm pretty damn hyped. Four Warfronts. I've done them several times on the on the uh, on the beta, and they are a lot of fun. And I just 
honestly, I just can't wait to get like an organized group together and do Warfronts as a group and uh, have a real good time. And seeing Arathi updated gets me really hyped for different zones having Warfronts like the Barons, like uh, potentially Feralus and any other zone in WoW that gets a Warfront will potentially get some sort of HD upgrade to it as well. And I'm so excited for that. I really, really am. So uh, that's pretty much it guys, uh, let me know in the comment section what you think of a new Arathi, if you're sad that as a 120 you won't actually be able to go back to old Arathi, uh, to my knowledge, unless between Warfronts they go back to the old zone, which from a storyline point of view would not make a lot of sense, but <laughs> you know, such is life. But yeah, I really hope they do just keep this zone as, a, um, as the upgraded version, even when Warfronts aren't active, I would like it to be very nice to look at, honestly, and uh, yeah. Pretty hyped for uh, world quests around the world as well, around the old world. And uh, yeah, excited for Battle for Azeroth. Uh, so before I go, I'd like to give a massive shout out to my amazing patrons and YouTube sponsors. You guys are amazing. And uh, if you're interested in supporting this channel in that way, links are down below. So leave a like on this video, guys, if you'd like to, and subscribe if you haven't. I also have a brand new merch store just on through Streamlabs, and uh, link to that is down below, along with the link to my partner Discord channel with over 3,000 members. And uh, yeah, with that, guys, I'll see you next time.